So infrastructure as code is something that is highly regarded in our community, our cloud community. But what is infrastructure as code? Is it a sort of code that helps create our infrastructure? Or is it something like we write a program and our infrastructure gets built automatically? Or is it a combination of both? And why are we even talking about infrastructure as code with AWS CloudFormation? So let's find out. So when you will be working as a DevOps engineer or even a cloud architect, the most challenging thing for you will be managing the infrastructure. So how well you're going to handle failures, how fast you're going to bring up the application platform, how are you going to have a smooth transition and deployment? These are some of the questions to which you will try and find answers almost like every time you step out for a new design review. But since the time cloud has come into the picture, it has totally changed the game of how applications are being deployed and how things are managed in this world where the competition levels are sky high. But what is infrastructure as code? So listen to this very carefully. I took this from Wikipedia, but it's really good. It says, infrastructure as code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine-readable definition files rather than physical hardware configurations or interactive configuration tools. So before I explain you the above term in detail, let's see the visual here. So we have a developer who writes the code for the infrastructure deployment that is being source controlled using a version control application like Bitbucket or SVN or GitHub. That is our infrastructure code commit. And that code is being consumed by the automation stage by the cloud service provider to deploy the application either on the cloud platform or in the on-premise environment. And this is the placeholder for the automation and this is your template to create infrastructure and that is what you commit and make use of. So when they say infrastructure as code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine readable definition files, it means I am using a blueprint or a template code rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools to provision resources and manage my infrastructure. So the thing that we are going to use is a code that is going to manage our infrastructure. And that is why it is called infrastructure as code. So you being a developer who writes the code for the infrastructure deployment that is being source controlled by a version control application like Bitbucket or SVN or GitHub. And that code is being consumed by the automation stage where you actually automate the cloud provisioning. And that is taken up by this cloud service provider that you have like AWS to deploy the application either on the cloud platform that we have or in the on-premise environment. And that is why it is called as infrastructure as code. So now do you understand what is the importance of the recipe to make the burger? Let's change things now and see the same for cloud. In the cloud, your list of ingredients would be like your VPC, EC2 instances, your CloudWatch, IAM and services that you might use to construct or deploy your application. And that is what makes up for the template or the blueprint that you deploy or the template that you use to deploy the applications and automate your infrastructure. So now if I tell you, you just need to write a piece of code to automate your deployments for your infrastructure deployment and it will be up in a moment, wouldn't you feel that it's just like magic? Yes, it is. It is a form of magic, but it is not uh, actual magic that happens, but it is your code that is doing the magic here. But out of curiosity, if you just ask yourself, but why there was a need for infrastructure as code, then we have to find out the answer for that as well. And let's check that out. So let's understand what is the problem. The first thing is cost or the first thing was cost. If I ask you to do something and I would pay you about five bucks for every time you perform the task, let's suppose I need multiple tasks to be completed and I need to manage hundreds of resources. Some might be able to do that on time and some may not be, isn't it? So here, what is the first thing that we are losing? No, it's not money, it's time. And time is something that adds up in future costs of managing resources to accomplish the task. And managing resources is something that costs you time and money and resources. And with infrastructure as cloud, it is much more simplified because you have a set template 
to execute every time, you need to create a deployment. So now you understand why cost is a factor. Cost is not always about money. It is about time and the resources as well. Second thing is scalability. So the reason why scalability was a problem because we can't just wait for things to happen. And we can't wait for the applications to scale and be managed manually when the demand is growing. And it's not like spinning up EC2 instance. I know you might be thinking I'll create an auto scaling group. But my friend, when we deploy an application, there might be more than 30 to 40 services and there will be more than 50 to 60 EC2 instances running. And each of them should be configured on the go to manage time and scalability. And that was not possible manually. And if that's not possible to manage, and if you have to create backup servers and provision resources when you get the need, that would be a disaster because people would have to wait for a long period of time to access their application. And that's where our third point is being covered. That is availability. The resources at a given point of time should be available to the users. Otherwise, there is no point hosting your application. Last one is inconsistency. As I've already mentioned in the first point as well, let's suppose I need multiple tasks to be completed by the DevOps team and I have to manage hundreds of resources. So some might be able to do the task on time and some may not be able to. And it's not just time. There might be differences and errors due to manual configuration deployment. That could lead to a collapse in deployment because as humans, doing repetitive tasks may not be as accurate and you can't blame people for making mistakes. Yes, there is a scope of improvement and that is why we follow the process, but there will be inconsistencies. And that is one of the main benefits of using infrastructure as code, that is consistency. That is why we always think how consistent our application deployments can be. And with infrastructure as code, it has become very efficient and consistent. So now if you see this, you will have a clear idea of how things work in real world. The crux of the automation is the automation staging where you make use of the cloud service provider to manage resources and provision resources. So imagine this scenario, the DevOps team or the SRE team just writes a code to deploy an application and they just have to push it. Once it's reviewed, the code actually gets committed to the versioning pool and the automation staging takes the code and deploys it either on the cloud or on your on-premise data center. And what is that you did? Did you manually deploy each service? No. Did you provision them manually to auto scale on demand? No. You just wrote the template or the blueprint for it to work. And that's what IAC or infrastructure as code is bringing onto the table. And that's the simplicity IAC is going to give you.